Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Ruby Hart. I use they, she pronouns, and this is the primary game I speed run, Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, my commentators, do you want to introduce yourselves? Tic Tac, you can go first. Yeah, yeah. sure. I'm Tic Tac. I'm also a runner of this game, part of the big, big community that we are, moderator on the SRC and the Discord. Mm -hmm. And I'm Foxy Jira. Um, I used to speed run this game a lot, but not anymore. Uh, I'm just kind of here for commentary and, uh, I guess, you know, fun. Yeah, and these two, uh, we've done a bunch of marathons together. They helped me learn the speed run for this game, so I'm extremely grateful. Thank you for being here, guys. Um, to walk you through really quick what this speed run is, because it is a very niche uh, category extension. So uh, the way that this game works, typically, you not only uh, skip runs, there's nothing in, like that at all that exists in this game. You basically just fight 16 individual colossi that all behave completely differently. They have different sizes, behavioral patterns, um, and there's a bunch of travel time. You get cutscenes in between. But with this particular category, normal time attack, boss rush, random, we're skipping all of that. So all you're going to see is the individual Colossus fights. And since we're doing them in a random order rather than from one to 16, this is the way I would practice it with my best friends. So I love to run it this way. And I'm a D&D nerd. We have a D20 uh, based on the Adventure Zone Balance, uh, which is an amazing podcast and a dice tray. So the way that the Colossus order is going to be decided is as I fight these Colossi, Tic Tac will be rolling the D20 to determine which Colossus I have to fight next. So if I'm very frantically asking, what did it land on? That's what's happening here. We have a dice tray on the table with us. So, hey, who's our first Colossus? It's Phaedra, the fourth one. Oh, I love that Colossus. OK, great. Um, so, and I'll try and give explanations as we go, but it is really rapid fire. So we are going to start the timer as we fight this Colossus in three, Two, one, go. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Okay, so Phaedra or the horse, dragon, giraffe, I've heard it all. You decide what animal you think this is. Uh, the way that we actually fight this Colossus is uh, with speed running, we launch ourselves with the horse towards the back leg. Um, so think of it like a car. Uh, you are moving at the same momentum as the car. So we will be doing a lot with multiple of the Colossi of flinging ourselves off the horse in order to actually get onto the Colossus rather than using the tunnels that you would normally have to hide in to trick her. So once I'm actually up here, then uh, once I have stable footing, I can get further up on the, don't, don't, don't do this. Um, once I'm actually on the leg and stabilized, then I can get up a little bit higher. And rather than having to trick her to get into tunnels uh, like you would in the any percent run, uh, and then she lowers her butt, instead I can just jump directly towards the back ladder and already we're on the Colossus. So this cuts out about four to 30 minutes, if you're playing casually, of trying to figure out how to trick her and get her to stay still. Um, now, there are gonna be, uh, throughout this run, just to kind of go over something you'll see a lot, these weak spots. Uh, so just this little like uh, break in the back of the neck. Um, and those allow you to then get the Colossus to do certain things and get access to the weak spot sigils. That's what actually deals damage to them. So for this Colossus, she won't lower her neck until you do those two hits. Then once I'm on the head, I can get something called a plant, um, which actually exists in several Colossi. So no matter how much she shakes me, she's not going to be able to throw me off. Then uh, basically from here, I'm just holding the grab button and stabbing her all the way home. And just like that, that's the first Colossus. That's Phaedra. <laughs> nice one, Ruby. Thank you. Um, and heads up. If I miss a strat uh, in any percent normal and hard, etc., cetera, uh, where we don't have the option to hit the retry button, you'll normally see that we have a lot of backup strats for that since there isn't really a way to uh, get those same animations in the way that we need them to exist. But since we're doing time attack, if I miss something, because everything in this run is about AI manipulation, uh, physics abuses, and really, really precise inputs. So if I miss something, I'm probably gonna hit retry. So uh, I'm actually gonna be donating $10 for every time I hit retry. So can you do me a favor and mark a tally? I just for, you're the best <laughs> for one. So who's the next Colossus? It's Barba. Oh my God, you're giving me the easy ones in the beginning. I love this. Um, okay, so Barba, or, or I have nicknames for all of them. This is my beardy boy. 
um, or the old sage, uh, just depending on what you want to use, exists in a big temple. And normally the way you defeat this Colossus is he runs all the, or you run all the way to the back of the arena. This is another one where you would hide. He kneels down and you can grab onto his big beard. But by using the animations that he actually has during this opening to our advantage, we can get him to trigger one of his stomps, land directly in the hand, get to the wristband, and then by using the physics and how Wander's body is moving on the arm, I can actually run from the arm directly upwards and onto the head of the Colossus. So let me see if I can show this off. Give me one second. There Beautiful. we go. So already there we're we on the head of the Colossus. Um, okay, so, and now uh, again, you'll notice that uh, I have landed in that specific placement that no matter how much uh, Barba moves, he's not gonna be able to knock me out of it. So uh, with two and a half stabs, since every sigil has a specific amount of stabs it needs in order to actually knock it out, um, then that sigil's done. And with two and a half more stabs on this back, uh, the Colossus will be done. Now, this is one that likes to meme and shake a lot. So I might end up yelling at him quite a bit if I can't cancel his animations. Babe, babe, no, please stop. Hey, hey, cooperate with me. It's Valentine's Day. I, I wanted to come here just to have a good time. I would appreciate it. Thank you. There we go. Barbara's down. <laughs> oh. And one thing to note um, mm -hmm. with what Ruby's talking about, with yeah. we're saying two and a half, like just counting out these numbers, is in the bottom left corner of the screen, you're going to see the stamina bar. And when you charge that up, you can see a little ring start to grow. And we're actually talking about percentages related to that ring. Um, yeah, that's like how the we, white dotted it, lines, exactly. exactly. Yeah, so that, that's how we kind of gauge how much health that we are damage that we need to do to the actual Colossus and the individual sigils. Absolutely. Who's next? Avion is next. And a little okay. bit more about the stab amounts. That yeah. will actually come in handy with quite a few strats. So this game can get very precise with the amount of damages we do. Mm -hmm. Some people in the community have actually like used the PS2 emulator to calculate exactly how much damage it is. And uh, it actually keeps going and going some things we didn't really think about before. Yeah, and one reason that's really important to calculate those stab damages is not only so we don't waste time charging up stabs more than we actually need to, but there are some colossi where the actual strat is only hitting a uh, sigil exactly the amount you need to without actually killing it. That way you can get a one cycle and it won't repeat any of its animations like you normally would get in a, a casual version. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to one of y'all because this is a great Colossus but could go very wrong very quickly. Yep. Sure thing, Avion is yeah. the flying one. Many of you will probably know it because it's a favorite of many, many casual players because of how exciting it is. For us speedrunners, it's not a good one at all because it's so easy to fall off. And uh, that's just because even if you do everything correct, besides the crazy strats that we use for this one, sometimes Wonder just loves to stumble, to glitch out, to fall through a wing. It happens every time yep. and uh, kills a lot of runs. No pressure, Ruby. Oh, thanks. Uh, also, there's oh, there's not a lot of RNG in this particular game, uh, with a few exceptions. And one of them is if this right wing that I'm on right now is going to go down or up at the start. And depending on that, there are two different strats that I could potentially do. Oh, why did you get me down wing? Oh, that's my least favorite. Okay, so basically what we do for this um, is hold the... Uh, oh, that's nice. beautiful. Okay, so uh, there are two different versions of what we call a wing drop when playing this game. One is the one that you just saw with a down wing, where basically uh, I can let go at exactly the right time. And as Avion is spinning around, I can let go and grab onto the Colossus again right when I need to. So it's just a really easy way of officially getting from one wing to the other. The up wing is personally my favorite because uh, if I can get that up wing, then it means that I can drop instead of from uh, one side just to the shoulder, I can get from one uh, full one side of the wing to the other. But that's Avion. There you go. That was amazing. <laughs> that there was we the go. first there we go. try to. Oh, oh my God. If you land in the drink for this Colossus, which is so so easy to happen and has killed so many runs, it loses you a solid minute, minute and a half, which is not <laughs> something we're looking for. If I if I do a retry for something like the first Colossus Phaedra that I had to, um, then that's maybe seven, eight seconds. So we're really not super concerned about those particular time losses. But for this Colossus, it's it's legitimately terrifying. Yeah, it's kind of funny, actually. During my streams, yeah. I always have a heart rate monitor up. And on this one specifically, <laughs> whenever I have to do the crazy jumps, it's...
just goes up to 130, 140, all the way. <laughs> exactly. And who's next? Who's next? It's uh, Kuro, number eight. Ooh, okay, so we call this Colossus a gimme because even though in the casual version of this game, if you've ever had the chance to play this before, this is a terrifying fight. For speedrunners, it's the easiest fight in the entire game. Um, so, uh, and this is one where one cycles are going to come into play. Um, as well as uh, cycle stabs. So um, actually, Foxy, you're pretty good at explaining that. Could you break this down while I do it? Sure. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, so we have different versions of stabbing, and what Ruby mentioned before was a plant, which is basically you get Wander in a certain position that they can't be shaken off of a Colossus. Now, sometimes that is uh, we want that because the Colossus takes so months and it's, it wastes so much time. But with some Colossi, they're really not going to move that much, either because they're so big or they're so slow. And um, with one like Kuro, basically you can position yourself in a way so that after you stab, you can it'll the the actual animation and where you are on the Colossus will just kind of pop you out really quickly, so you can immediately re-grab and start another stab right away. Um, and so Kuro's going to go down really fast. Um, it's it's abs it's it's nightmarish how crazy it is. Uh, it's funny with this Colossus, uh, as Ruby said, this is a gimme on normal, but on hard it's actually one of the hardest. Oh yeah, yeah. the cycle stabs. Yeah. So you can see Ruby right there is literally just except for that last one is just popping out of those stabs. You just did three, uh, two and a half stabs basically within like five, not even five seconds and just absolutely done. So yeah, uh, Kuro's, uh, basically the fight is based around um, how high Kuro falls from. Nice. The, there you go. Very, see, quick and easy, not even 40 seconds, so fast. Yes, and yeah. this is a great time for donations yeah. if you have any. Yes, awesome. Please. We have many donations. Oh, so yes. much love is being shown. I'm trying to get through some to uh, uh, let them yeah, be Yeah, it's a really street. fast run. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, Exun has donated. $30 saying I lost both my grandmothers mothers to Alzheimer's and have seen firsthand how horrible it can be for families. Hopefully one day we can get rid of this horrible disease. Good luck, Ruby. And just remember, the Colossi did everything wrong. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. Thanks, Kaysen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And we have time for one more. For one more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Coriana donates $20 saying time to watch an amazing speedrun and beat an amazing game. Though I am a new member of the Crystal Crew, I can genuinely say it is one of the kindest communities I've ever been a part of. Love you, Ruby. And that goes towards Donut County any percent. Uh, incentive. Thank you so much. EK and Corleana, thank you so much. I adore you both, and thank you for being part of the Crystal Crew. Thank you for being here and donating to this incredible cause. Anyone else who can donate, it really is an amazing, amazing cause to donate to, and there's plenty of time to do it. This marathon goes all week. This is my arch nemesis. Do, do you want to explain it while I sure panic? Sure thing. Because I will be panicking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bastaran is one that, if everything goes all right, it will be very fast, but it's one of the, if not the most difficult trick. And uh, it and uses physics. Nemesis. Yep. It's not an easy one. Let's see if that'll work. Yeah! Oh! No! No! <laughs> no! Okay. It's fine. This is fine. You, you get the idea. It's, it's, it's physics. It's I swear it's, it's not fine. a glitch. It's <laughs> so, unfortunately, I ended up right under the crest of the chin, but it looked like it was about to work. Oh, that was so unfortunate. Okay, take two. That's fine. This and is fine. Everything's fine. How it works <laughs> is basically side jumps are broken in this game. And if you do them at the perfect moment, the perfect timing, you can simply just transfer all energy from the Colossus to the side. Oh, there yes! There it is, there hey, it is. There we go. This is my arch nemesis that is the hardest trick for me in the game, so the fact that I got that second try, it, I've been stressing over that for weeks. That's incredible. Um, now, what's gonna happen from here is uh, Bossaron likes to uh, kind of buck his head backwards, at least for the first half of his health bar. Once that first half of the health bar goes away, um, he's gonna switch from doing the fully uh, bobbing his head up and down animations to just swinging them left and right. There is a plant that you can get, but you, it doesn't actually really count as a plant um, until the second half of the fight because he's gonna be shaking you out no matter what since you're being swung upside down by the head bob. Yep. And, no, yeah. and, and to plan for this one is just like the weirdest one possible. Sometimes it looks like you got it perfectly fine and then you shake out anyway. And sometimes you just get it out of nowhere. I have no clue how that one yeah, works. It's, but it's, we take that. <laughs> yeah, second try, 105. That's great. I will take that. Yeah, there, there you go. Thank you. Um, okay, and then who's next? Phalanx. Phalanx, and we have time for a few more donations. Awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Solmas <laughs> and Delirium Pearl donates $50 saying, Our favorite streamer is at ESA running for a great cause. Shut up and take our money. <laughs> Good luck, Ruby. And let's speak. Uh, let's beat Alzheimer's. Thank you so much for the donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Tiny Tim <laughs> sends us $5 saying, Hey all, donating for the uh, awesome Ruby Heart and the Shadow of the Colossus run. So awesome to see you at ESA and I'm sorry I can't be there. Good luck with the run and hope to see you at a future event. Cheers. Uh, 
Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. It, this is actually my first in-person marathon, so I'm so honored that it could be ESA. I actually started speed running during the pandemic because I'm a professional actor in my real life. And um, when theater shut down, I didn't have the chance to perform anymore. And this was my comfort game. It's my favorite game of all time. I've been playing every version basically since the PS2 version and I've raced it with my roommates. Um, and after a while, I got so good at it that they were like, you really should consider speed running. And now because of these guys and because of so many incredible people in the Team Eco Speedruns community, because of my wonderful Crystal crew, um, I've really fallen in love with it and now I can't imagine doing anything else. So thank you. Um, and if y'all can explain this, because I'm going to try and go for the IL here. Foxy, here free. Oh, yeah. Um, so Phalanx is uh, my favorite Colossus. I'm just going to put that out there because uh, best boy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but basically what Ruby's going to be going for here is uh, an IL strat that is... Uh, I don't know. It's, 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 oh, okay, we're turning left here. So basically what we're going to try to do is shoot the uh, three sacks in a very specific uh, set of time and then uh, get Phalanx to do this little twist. And, okay, not quite, but basically you, uh, through doing that timing. Oh, sick flip. Uh, you can, Sweet flip. Yeah, yeah, sick flip. You can um, base, make it so that so Phalanx did go down there, but it gets so close to the ground that you can immediately jump onto the three sigils and then uh, basically like parkour your way across his, uh, his back. Um, and so one thing we're going to do here, uh, Phalanx is one of the Colossi with three sigils naturally, and then uh, Ruby for each of the, for the first two sigils is going to do 1.9 stabs for each. That just uh, is just below the damage threshold to actually kill the sigil, because after killing a sigil, you have just, uh, Phalanx goes into a short uh, time period where it's going to dive into the ground and has to come back up, and that's what that's why you have a 12 minute goal time for this time attack. Um, but since we don't hit that damage threshold, and thanks to the damage from the three arrows that we fire, uh, actually, just now, by killing the last sigil, we'll actually kill Phalanx without actually having to do all of that nonsense. So it's an extremely quick fight. Um, the uh, aisle is super cool, but you know, it's it's a very, very, very tight timing to get. So just doing it like this in general is uh, is super fast and super cool. So, and three, two, one, jump stab, dead. Yes. Okay. There you go. <laughs> There's Phalanx. And the only major difference with the IL is you do save quite a bit of time, but uh, rather than landing on the wing like I did, uh, you would be able to stand on the horse on Agro and then launch yourself because Phalanx dips just low enough that you can jump directly onto our back. So it just saves a little bit of climbing time and then there are ways to just basically uh, suicide jump from one wing to the next to the next. It's insane, but it's so cool. Um, but that was still a really great fight. I'm so happy with the 132. Um, who's next? Valis, the first one. Valis, awesome. And we have time to read probably two donations. Great. Amazing. Anatole Fister donates $15 saying, Hey Ruby, I wish you all the good luck for your run. I hope you have a great time at ESA. The Crystal Crew supports you from all over the world. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Oh my goodness. Uh, I wanted to go towards the costume if it hasn't been met yet. I want the person to wear the alternative. It hasn't been met yet. Yeah, okay. We yes. will, we will um, make that sure. And... Absolutely. Phil Buckhawk says, get them Colossi, and donates $30. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so we're actually about to go to the first fight, which uh, is one of the fastest as far as the end game time is concerned. And while you would think it would be the easiest, this one can actually trip up speedrunners quite easily. So uh, we'll see if I can pull it off. But basically what I'm gonna do here is normally the game expects you to climb up all of the architecture on Valis's back in order to get to the one sigil that exists on his head in normal. But by hitting the weak spot on his ankle to get him to knock over twice, but then landing on the side over here, I can get myself to do this little swing and I can actually move during this cutscene. So what I'm doing is moving Wander into the right position so I can grab onto his fur. And as soon as I do, that's kind of a rough position, but I can make this work since I ended up on the left side, the right can be even worse. Um, but once I'm actually up here, then all I have to do, uh, I'm already there. This saves a really, really good chunk of time. Uh, and now I only need to do three stabs to this head sigil. And uh, as soon as we hit the final stab, I'm gonna go ahead and jump stab. That's gonna take me right into the cutscene, And just like that, the first Colossus is down. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you notice, I'm gonna do jump stabs for a lot of the final hits of the Colossi. And the reason for that, there are a bunch of different stabs we use at different times for different reasons. Uh, reasons. And while jump stabs are the most powerful stab in the game, you don't want to use them all the time because there's about a five second animation of Wander like struggling to pull out the sword and that just takes too much time. We don't want that. 
So what we do instead is if you save the jump stat for the final hit on the Colossus, there's like a slow motion animation that usually happens when Wonder stabs regularly for the final hit. But by stabbing with a jump stab, it takes us directly into that cutscene. And since for the speedrun.com timer, we count the in-game time, that's what really matters. 10 is next, perfect. This is actually a, it, it's a Colossus that can be stressful, but usually is a little bit nicer to us than a lot of the others. So uh, we've been getting pretty good luck here. Um, so Dirge, uh, this is Colossus number 10, I call him my, my sand boy. Um, so this particular Colossus has huge eyes, which are one of the main weak points we want to hit. Um, he will dip under the sand and only occasionally peek those out. So what I'm going to do for this Colossus is immediately get on Agro, so get on the horse. And as soon as the fight starts and we get that incredible music, that this game is really just immaculate in so many ways, um, then I'm going to go ahead and make sure to line up Dirge directly behind me. And as soon as I do that, get an arrow. That's the first arrow already. We've got that. And see if I can get him to land in one of these pillars. And if not, he's going to go ahead and hit a wall. I just barely missed that first pillar. So I'm going to wait for him to do that. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and ride up. He has two sigils, and this is another Colossus where the uh, one cycle timing is gonna be really important. So I need to do one stab. I need to do a 0.5 stab. And then I need to do a 0.95 stab, which is almost to the edge, but not quite. And that puts me, okay, that was perfect. Um, so basically what that does is uh, it kills, oh no! <laughs> That's fine. Uh, unfortunately, I jumped just a little too high there uh, and Dirge threw me off, but that's okay. That's not that big a time loss. Um, but basically, uh, now that I did that exact amount of damage to the first sigil, um, rather than when I finish the damage on this one, Dirge going under the sand and us having to do all that same stuff again, uh, Dirge is just going to immediately die. So in 109, that's, that's the next Colossus. It, that's definitely one of the tricks that requires a lot of timing and very, very precise stabbing. It's mm -hmm. not to be underestimated, and getting the one cycle here takes people who just start out with the game quite a long of time. Yeah, and, and this is one of the few places I'm going to use what we call a .95 stab, which is honestly the most precise and terrifying stab in the game. The other place it's going to happen is even more terrifying and precarious with Colossus number 12, but I don't know who I'm fighting next, so what's, what's up? Malice, my personal favorite. The final Colossus! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we're actually headed towards the final climactic Colossus, so uh, number 16. And towards the end of the game, for some reason, there are, uh, most of the cutscenes in this game you can actually skip. But for Colossus number 16, they make it completely unskippable. So um, there's going to be one time in the fight where we're just going to kind of chill for a few seconds. And then other than that, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of climbing. And a lot of this is actually specific pathing and dodging. So if you've played this casually, the way that you fight this Colossus is he has a bunch of barriers and bunkers all across his arena because he has heat-seeking missiles, which are terrifying. Um, but what we can do instead is by running a very specific path that speedrunners discovered a while back. Yeah, back um, in the PS2 version. Yeah, like back in the PS2 version, because a lot of the uh, treat, uh, tricks uh, for each of the games are actually very applicable. Um, we can actually run this path and make sure not to get hit a single time. Uh, since Wander expects us to be at those barriers right in front of me and not up here, it hits the wall or the ground in front rather than this ground up here. So like I'm, I'm good where I am and just like that I'm in the final tunnel. So rather than having to do five minutes of going through a million tunnels, I'm already underneath the Colossus. And while we have this climb, because all I'm going to be doing here is super basic climbing, uh, do you want to read a few more donations? That is fantastic. Absolutely. I would have some. Der Donnerbalken has sent us $15 saying, Hi, everybody. Good luck on the run, Ruby. And please be nice to Kuro. Oh, I mean, I, I already think I was very nice. I gave him belly scratches with love and my sword. So I think we're OK there. Can we uh, do another? I, I mean, if if it's okay with people afterwards, I could do another, but otherwise I'm going to be giving scratches to the other colossi. Um, oh, you mean donations. Yes. Wow, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, well, Library Nerd has sent us $25 saying, Hi, Ruby. Much love from one of the newest members of the cult. JK, it's on a cult. <laughs> sending that to the Control and Bounce, and bounce uh, Glitch Exhibition. Thank you. Center. And we... Uh, Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and explain. So basically what we're doing here is usually you have to use about five different weak spots in order to get onto this Colossus. So going from 
the back, to one hand, to the shoulder, to the other hand, to the other shoulder, and that just takes too much time. So we hit the final shoulder weak spot really early, and then by using the animation to our advantage, we can jump directly to the arm and the head. So uh, this fight, like you can see, the goal is nine minutes and 30 seconds for people who are casual players to do this in time attack, but we reduce this down to a two to a two and a half minute fight. Um, I will say, if you want to see people beat this even faster, who are just insanely talented at this game, there are uh, IL runners, so individual level runners, who have just optimized, oh, that's a sub two minute. Um, sorry y'all, I think that's my PB. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. Um, thank you. Uh, but that is a uh, Colossus that like people have optimized this game so much that in in-game time Theoretically, you could beat this in 10 minutes or less um, Which is absolutely insane to think about uh, so if you want to check out some other incredible runners Especially like some of the Japanese runners have found insane glitches and IL uh, IL struts for this game So definitely check out those speed run boards. Who's next? Uh, number 11, Celosia Okay, number 11, Solosia, amazing. Uh, I love this Colossus. Uh, my two favorites are what I call my small boys. Um, so unlike the other Colossi who you've seen so far that are towering and massive, these are very small. They're only about four or five times the size of Wonder, but they move so much faster than you. And if they hit you, they immediately stun lock you. But the cutest thing about this one is he, he's a sweet boy who's afraid of fire. So um, the way that you normally beat this Colossus is by grabbing a torch uh, from one of the beacons. You'll see me grab one in a minute. And by basically swinging it in front of his face so that he uh, knocks off a cliff and then uh, his armor breaks. But what we do instead as speedrunners is an AI manipulation where we trick him into thinking we have the torch in our hand the entire time and we don't really. So what I'm gonna do is as soon as this happens uh, and Celosia knocks this down, I'm gonna grab the torch and go to this next beacon to light it just because that saves us extra time, gets us closer to the cliff side. I'm gonna whistle to get Celosia's attention. And then by picking up and dropping the torch, Celosia's uh, AI switches between thinking, oh, you're scary, I'm afraid of you, and oh, you're not scary, I'm a fight. So um, basically we challenge her this way and as long as you are close to the ledge, you have the torch in your hand, um, it, like you meet those qualifications, then Celosia will activate and trigger that cutscene. So it basically just gets her closer to the edge sooner. I can't even explain the fight and the amount of time it takes. There you go, there's Celosia. <laughs> um, and we have time for a few more donations or announcements. Great. Amazing. Dylan, Brick, uh, Dylan Brooke sends us $50 saying, congrats to Ruby to making it all the way here. We are so proud of you and cheering you on. Thank you for ESA for this amazing stream. As someone who has lost a family member to Alzheimer's, this event means a lot to me. Love from the Crystal Crew. Thank you so much for this generous Thank donation. You. And Zell donates $10 saying, not a cult. <laughs> <laughs> not a cult. <laughs> it, we're totally not a cult. It's just a crew. It's fine. This is fine. Everything's <laughs> fine. Um, OK, so we are headed towards Colossus number 15. Uh, so that is Argus. This is uh, Mammoth Sea, according to the designers. Technically, all the nicknames that I'm using that sound like Argus, Pelagia, Celosia are actually fan names that stuck. And then I have my own fan names, but uh, they have much more boring ones. This one is going to go like crazy. I'm going to let one of y'all explain kind of the physics abuse that's happening uh, happening here while I do it because it's nonsense. All right. Yeah. Blink it, you miss it. This is another one like Bassaran that abuses side jumps. But first of all, we got to uh, do the hand sigil. That's the second retry. Third one. Yes. Third one. Okay. Great. Still very good. Oh, that's right. I had to do a few on bot. Yeah. Anyway, because usually <laughs> you would do all the kinds of intended puzzle that that take a lot of time. But since we don't have the time for that, we have to kill the hand sigil immediately. And doing that is kind of weird because he still has the like uh, weapon in his hand, but with a well-timed jump. <laughs> <laughs> but with a well-timed jump. <laughs> you can still grab the little bit of fur in between, which is a very precise one, very difficult. But uh, we used to do it another way, but which was even more difficult. So we are happy to get what we can get. So let's see about that. Yep, there it there is. There it is, there it is, there it is. And now uh, Ruby will try to jump to the foot immediately and set up for a big physics manipulation. So 
I'll just let Ruby do this one and you will see what I mean. Side jumps are fantastic, interesting in this game. And Wonder turns into a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so weirdly in this game, uh, there are a few other places, like if you s remember with Bossaron, that turtle boy that I said was my nemesis, um, if you side launch off of Colossi in weird places and weird ways, it'll launch you different directions. So for Bossaron, it launched us to the uh, left towards his head. And for Argus, it launches us directly upwards. But there you go, there's Argus. And who's next? Number seven, Hydras. Number seven, incredible. How many do we have left? One, two, three, four, five. Not too many. It's like we're speed running. I'm, yeah. No, I'm, I'm knocking on wood because this is PB pace. I'm like, I don't wanna, that's really nice. Okay, so uh, you said- um, Hydras. Hydras, I got very excited and then forgot what life was. <laughs> okay. Let's see, so Hydrus, this is one of the ones that has one of the most specific strats. Um, Foxy, I'm gonna go ahead and let you take it for this one because I, I've gotta focus during this Yeah, thing. Hydrus, yeah. Um, I will say if you do have, um, what, Thaslophobia? Yeah, if you have Thaslophobia, oh. mm -hmm. you might wanna turn away. Um, we just like to mention that uh, just because you are fighting a giant eel in a big old lake. So uh, yeah, that's one thing. It's but, definitely considered one of the most terrifying fights, so yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. And so um, Hydrus, basically, uh, it's in the PS2 version, you had a nice little setup of like, uh, I don't know, leaves on the water to position yourself to make it so that basically you can cause Hydrus to kind of uh, breach in a way um, to get immediately onto its head to be able to kill the sigil. Um, for us, it's a weird amount of, uh, we thankfully, uh, according uh, with Tic Tac's helps and another just random <laughs> casual runner was like, hey, I think I found out a weird way to make Hydras do some stuff. Uh, we just count, we look at the actual, the time, actually the timer here and uh, we start moving at one second and we stop moving at eight seconds. Uh, and that positions Hy Hydras in the correct way so that as it comes up to breach uh, to actually start the normal animation that we can do uh, some simple uh, inputs of doing a jump stab, jumping away a little bit, and doing another uh, jump to you know get immediately onto Hydrus's neck, and then uh, thankfully because of the damage output of the horns from um, Hydrus, we don't have to worry about it at all. We just jump stab four times in a row. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, sometimes uh, yeah, uh, uh, Wander has some animal magnetism and. Uh, kind of tends to not always jump where you want him to, but basically uh, you would normally just jump stab a few times in a row, no big deal, um, but here that's you know, that's totally fine. You just get on and wrap up the last few stabs, and uh, well yep, done. nine minute fight done in just under a minute. First try. Yeah, uh, first try too, good job. Yeah, the reason why we were saying, oh, that sucks, is there is a way to jump stab for every single one of the hits, and that can get the time to like, somewhere around the 42, 43 second mark, that ended up being about 53 seconds because mm -hmm. once you take out that first node, so the uh, node that has the electric sparks mm -hmm. coming off of it, um, that can uh, basically make it a lot harder because the line that you can jump stab from that won't cause Hydra's head to bob up and down moves way further back. So typically for me, just to save a little bit of extra time, if I hit that node, I just grab on and hold on for the ride. It takes us forever because we have to wait for the tendrils to hit us from the bottom of the lake, so feel free to read some more donations. That's great. We have so many on the back burner. Thank you so much for all your generous donations. Yes. This run could only be more awesome if we reach 15K during it. Can we do yes. it? That would be awesome. Please, let's and go! Temp makes a great start by donating $100, saying thank you for providing such an amazing, fun, and chaotic, wholesome community. We are so proud of you, and I love watching you show your skill to the world. Come and join the Crystal Crew. Oh, thank you, Temp. And go ahead and read one more yeah. donation, please. Feel free. Joe85 sends $20, saying, such a great game and such a great runner. Multiple people in my family have battled with Alzheimer's, and it is great to see so much support for this cause. Thanks to all the runners, hosts, commentators, and staff, their hard work on this amazing event. Thank you for this donation. Thank you so much. And uh, Temp, thank you for being a mod of the Crystal Crew. You're freaking amazing. Um, okay, this Colossus, you know how I said there wasn't a lot of RNG in this game? This whole Colossus has RNG that could or could not betray me. So we'll see how she decides to cooperate right now. So basically what I do, uh, I'm doing here, that was amazing. Um, so uh, with this Colossus, normally what you have to do is climb, uh, swim all 
all the way around her, get all the way up her back, and we can actually use these teeth on her head to kind of direct her motion and where she is moving. So uh, what we want to do is get her close to this gazebo, and then there is an animation uh, cancellation. We can do, oh my god, thank you, baby, I love you. Okay, so um, there's an animation cancellation we can do, and she will or will not cooperate with it uh, by grabbing the head as the sparks fly. And now by doing several precision stabs, I should be able to take her out one cycle. Come on. Oh, that was an understab. I think it was. No! Oh! Oh, wow. oh my god! <laughs> that, uh, oh, that was terrifying. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, the precision on this one is quite terrifying at times because if you do too much damage, the animation starts immediately. If you do too little, you don't deal enough damage. This was right on the edge. Yeah, that. that was. I think that was about the absolute minimum I've seen <laughs> in uh, my four years of speedrunning this game. Yeah, so. no, I anticipated it. I, <laughs> I swear, I thought that was going to be just too little. But getting a sub one minute on that Colossus is an incredible time. Great I'm time. so, so happy with that. And, and getting that uh, face uh, with jumping on with the arrows. I forgot how to use words. What is life? <laughs> um, but once you use those arrows to get Pelagia to move in the right way and you use magnet hands to make Wander grab on, even though you technically aren't close enough, um, you can get on faster. Who's next? Gaius. Ga oh, amazing. Okay. This has probably one of the coolest speedrun strats in the game. I, it may take me a few tries to get it because it is also one of the hardest to get, but uh, we call it the Space Jam or the Gaius launch, and I'll let you guys take it. Uh, so Foxy, Tic Tac, whoever wants to go, feel free. I can go for it. Yeah. So this is another one with the physics. You can see a theme, not a lot of glitches, a lot of physics abuse. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gaius is just this gigantic colossus with the big sword. And Holy. what do you... And what you would usually do in an intended run would be to let him hit the middle center to destroy a part of it and be able to climb. But we have another idea, you know, because you saw physics are interesting, so let's see what Ruby can do with the idea of that. This one is very, very precise, so good luck. Thank you. Oh, oh, just close. short. Okay, that's all right. So sometimes if you don't get the jumps exactly right with the three, um, you can end up just a little bit short of the uh, ear, which is really what we're going for here. Um, so let me go ahead and give that another shot. Take two. Oh, and also what I'm doing here with the arrows uh, is I can't oh, see. Oh! Okay. <laughs> Yeet. Yeet. Um, I like to also joke, uh, if you've seen the TikTok, uh, TikTok of Adele just singing, go we, I just pretend that that's how to teach the strat because there is no good way to explain it. Um, as soon as I actually get towards the head, um, I'm gonna go ahead. I landed in a plant here, which is amazing. It is very hard to hit this plant. You have to be just right on the back edge of the sigil. I'm gonna do 3.5 stabs here. And then as soon as I'm done, he has one more sigil. So I have to transition to the belly as soon as he does this animation. Tilting his head backwards, I can basically go all the way down. And while his belly is tilted like this, this is actually ideal for me because then I can do if oh, unless Wander wants to hold a plant, that's fine. Uh, this is still really good. We should have a sub 120 here as far as the timing. Um, or a 120 perfect. Okay, that's incredible. So that's that's Gaius, that's the space jam. <laughs> okay, who's next? My personal favorite is, is yours, Zenobia. Zenobia? Okay, incredible. Um, so this is something that actually uh, Tic Tac and I bonded over as soon as I joined the community. This is our mutual favorite. This is the other small boy. I call him Senna Baby. Um, so this is a bulldog. He resides in an extremely big city um, and his job is to protect it. The way that you would normally beat this Colossus, because it's actually really important to understanding the speedrun strat, is there are a bunch of different towers all 
across his arena and you basically get him to knock into those to break them one by one by one so that they knock into each other and it creates a bridge for you and eventually you can get him to a platform to break his armor. Um, also, heads up, I use the pronouns all interchangeably for the Colossi. They're, they don't have established gender and I just assume they're as gender fluid as I am. Um, so if I switch between them, that's why. Um, but with this Colossus, what we're going to do instead is basically go all the way to the final pillar. And as soon as I get there, there are two different ways to do this. Uh, it really just depends on the day which one I can actually pull off. Um, the first one is called the super jump, which by uh, jumping towards the final pillar and spamming the jump button, um, I should be able to get Wander to fly upwards and then the other would involve magnet hands. We'll see which one uh, kind of happens here, but uh, since Tic Tac and I, this is our favorite, I'm going to let you take it from here so that I can focus yeah. on this. Yeah. About, about the super jump, by jumping into a specific uh, part of the tower, Wander glitches out, and if you do it right timing-wise and spam the button a lot, this yeah! happens. Yeah, there it is. Okay. This is a very tough trick. It's kind of inconsistent, and Ruby just did it perfectly. Good job. Yeah, especially first try. Like that. That's a really, really good feeling. Um, yeah, th I'm, I'm extremely happy with how this run is going. And right after this, already the next part is happening during the cutscene. There is a couple plateaus in the background which you can barely see. And while the cutscene is going, Ruby will try to jump there and from there directly to the top of the plateau. Let's see if that worked. Not quite. That's not okay, a big deal. But there is there is a way to do it even outside the cutscene. Yeah, so. this is be alive. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's what we usually try and do blind, but if not, it only takes about three extra seconds, so not a big deal. Um, but as soon as I shoot Sonobia the baby, um, feeling lazy. <laughs> I I shot you to get you aggroed. Please hit the pillar. Hit the pillar. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. Come here. Thank you. Okay, so now that she's hit the pillar, um, the armor is going to break off of her back. Uh, and once Babe comes out, then uh, I will be able to basically jump stab or just jump, get on the sigil. And once we land that plant, uh, then I should be able to just stab the Colossus all the way home. So that's all it's really going to take. And I would say from here, while I finish this Colossus, perfect time to read some more donations. This is awesome. I have to say, I'm completely overwhelmed, not just by this amazing run, but all the love that these viewers send us and with their <laughs> amazing donations. Because we have, first of all, we have surpassed $15,000. This yes! is absolutely fantastic. Yes! Yes! Thank and you. Four people have sent us $100 donations. Just what? stay with the hundred dollars saying, go Ruby, keep it up, the Christian crew believes in you. Distortion 2 says, always happy to see Shadow of the Colossus, good luck Ruby. Desu says, Desu, 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 Ruby, Desu, gun better. And Medicine says, happy to help out a great cause. Thank you so much for these amazing generous donations, it's a great cause, we're so proud of you, we're so proud of Ruby and the amazing run. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Also, hi, thanks Dis, yours was the first speed run I ever saw. Uh, let alone of this game. So, hi, thank you so much for the donation. This is a weird way to meet, but thank you so much. Um, okay, and... Last one, quad. This is the last, I'm sorry. You're on very good pace, one? go This is fast. pace, this is <laughs> pace, oh my God. Okay, amazing. Yeah, can people please just, like, like give some love, please? I would really appreciate it, oh my God. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Quad. Quad is uh, the second Colossus that we would fight in the normal order of things. And there are two different strats that we would use. One is for the any percent that we can't use here. And the other is the strat that we use for boss rush. So in the any percent run, you can actually start the cutscene of the Colossus spawning while you're mid-air jumping over him and just land dr directly on his back. But what we do here instead is his weak spots are on the bottom of his hooves. As soon as he starts moving forward, uh, I'm going to be able to line up right behind him. So as he's kind of getting in position to start turning and figuring out where I am, I can shoot his foot. And then as the butt goes down, I can grab onto it. So this is called the ump jump found by Aiden Umpherson. Aiden, I adore you. Thank you for this strat. Uh, and then I can go ahead and uh, do three stabs here. So what I'm going to try and do is run closer towards the spine so I can get cycle stabs. But apparently, 
quad just does not want to cooperate with me today. There we go, there's one. Um, so as soon as that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and make my way towards his head since that's where his final sigil is. And Foxy, can you hit the timer for me as soon as I do this final stab? You gotta hit the timer. Oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm gonna try, oh, I hit a plant. Okay, I hit a plant here. So uh, now um, I've just got the final stabs to go and the timer is going to stop in three, two, one. Uh, amazing run. That, all right. That was a one minute PB, everyone. Um, and oh my God, thank you so much. Um, thank you to everyone who tuned in for this run. Thank you for supporting uh, European Speedrun Assembly and this incredible cause that we're raising money for. If you have any more donations to ha uh, keep coming in, this marathon is happening all the way through the rest of the week. And there are so many incredible games and runners who are going to be showcased, including the next runner, who's actually gonna be playing one of my favorite games of all time, Sly Cooper 2. Uh, so uh, definitely check out, uh, stay around for the Rixers run. And then uh, otherwise, um, if you want to check me out um, again my name's Ruby Hart I am a actor streamer and speedrunner I love playing this game I'm learning other speedruns and if you want to join the team eco speedruns community uh, there are so many of us who are more than happy to welcome you with open arms so uh, do you have any other shout outs or oh and also um, I really quick because it's Valentine's Day I want to shout out uh, two of my favorite people at home Steven nay you're two of my favorite people in the world and uh, Steven is basically my other half when it comes to streaming. So thank you for your love, kindness, and support. Without you, I literally would not have had the confidence to start streaming the way I have. So thank you. Um, <laughs> All right, any shout outs that you guys want to do? Um, yeah. yeah, for the community, if you want to learn any of the Team Eco games, be it TOG, Eco, or Shadow of the Colossus, make sure to join our server. It's an amazing place to learn. We have a big library of a lot of videos, and a lot of people had to want to help you mm -hmm. learn. Yeah. That's bad. Oh uh, yeah. So uh, again, another shout out to the community. I've been uh, running this. Uh, I, I guess I stopped recently, but you know, hey, uh, I've been a part of the speedrun community for Shadow of the Colossus and the other um, Team Eco games since about 2018. So it's a wonderful community. Everybody is so helpful. Like Tech -tech said, we have so many things, and uh, I don't know. We're so happy to be here. So uh, otherwise, another big shout out to uh, Rick Astley in the audience who's been staring <laughs> at me and uh, the entire time he's never going to give me up or let me down. So uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Oh, also, uh, Foxy is going to be doing a run of Death's Door that I will be commentating on Friday. So if you're sticking around for other runs in the marathon, he's an incredible Death's Door runner. So please, please watch that. Thank you. Best runners go. Yeah. Heck yeah. Thank you okay. so much again, ESA, for having me. That's the yeah. end. Yeah. Before a transmission, I have to very quickly get a few things out of the way that are still addressed to you because oh. people have been sending so much love. Yes, I will, yes, I will quickly go I'm through ready. them and then we can go with on with the next one. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Even sends twenty dollars saying, "Ruby, here's the thing: you know to know how it ends and still begin to play it again. And if it might turn out, this time I learned that from a friend of mine." <laughs> Thank Nefflin you, Evan. Sends five dollars saying, "A question: What's your favorite theme between the opened way and a despair fed farewell?" Oh my God. I can't well, choose. We, the whole we, game's we, amazing. We'll just go on. Yeah. Uh, Cooperman say, uh, $50 donation uh, saying, hey, Ruby, Foxy, and Tic Tac, thank you for being upstanding members of the community. Love and miss you all. Jane sends $10. You're an inspiration, and I'm very proud of you, Ruby. Thank you for your supporting a great cause. Sunbro Jade sends $5 saying, hey, Ruby and the Crystal Group, so grateful to be part of this community. You're amazing, and we're all cheering you on. Also, because I must, what is bird? what is a bird but an aquatic snake? What is a bird but an aquatic snake? <laughs> Truly. Kate the Grey sends $20 saying, break a leg, Ruby, preferably not wonders. So happy to watch ASA, and we're all pulling for you. Temp sends another $50. Oh, we're no strangers to speedrunning, and you know, <laughs> we know the rules, and so do you. The crew is prepping hard. Thank you for being such a wonderful streamer. And uh, uh, Willa Dealer sends, I'm, says, tw sends $25 saying, I'm fairly new to the Crystal Crew. To the Crystal Crew, I'm sorry, this is so much. It's but okay. It's one of the best communities on Twitch. Go, Ruby, go. And um, Jal of the Appian Way sends five dollars saying, hey, Ruby, your old friend Jal here. Proud of you for making it this far and can't wait to see how your channel grows next. Till the next time, we can see each other. Thank you so much for this amazing Thank round. You. This was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Thank you all for donating. Thank you for breaking 15K.